got to be some of the most energetic and certainly the roughest South Asian music ever heard on Radio 3. It's by a group of teenagers, and they could have spent the evening playing computer games or watching satellite television, as youngsters tend to do in Pakistan, but they've opted to come here, to one of Pakistan's holiest of Sufi shrines, where the Punjabi saint poet Baba Farid lies buried. It's in a place called Pak Patan, and if you thought Sufi shrines are all about peace and quiet and meditation, think again. It's definitely one of the most chaotic and noisy places I've ever visited, and the young musicians have driven their listeners, hundreds of them, into a joyful frenzy, while the air gets thicker and thicker with the scent of ten rupee notes flying everywhere. Notes covering the harmonium and hanging off the singers too. Omali groups come here from across the country and queue up for ages just to be able to play for half an hour. And this happens all over Pakistan, every Thursday night. While anti-music fundamentalists grab all the news headlines, Muslim Sufis continue to use music which they say helps them feel closer to God. Baba Farid, who lived during the 11th century, was a great poet and the first to turn vernacular Punjabi and everyday language of bazaars into something spiritual and beautiful with a literary tradition to match. He's a special favorite of one of the regular visitors here, the mystic singer Sai Zahur, who you may remember from last year's Radio 3 Awards for World Music. Now he's from a different Sufi song tradition, not exactly a qawal, but more of a wandering minstrel, like a fakir, carrying a sort of lute in one hand, bells on his ankles, stamping rhythmically and lost to all but the one for whom he sings. He specializes in the poetry of the great Sufi saint Baba Bulle Shah. Bulle Shah lived during the 17th century and his poetry is full of the bittersweet pain and the trials and tribulations of the devotee who loves unconditionally.
Everybody quite likes Sayin Zahoor, and I'm now joined by him. Um, Sayin Zahoor, is this what you've been doing all your life? Ye jo kalam Hadrat Baba Bulle Shah ka ye gaya. All my life I have followed Baba Bulle Shah and other Sufi saints. It's been a life of total love, but not human love, not romantic love. It's love for the divine. It started when I was a boy, about seven years old. My family lived near a shrine, and I had the same dream again and again. It was a hand beckoning me to come towards it. The dream used to wake me up, and because I couldn't sleep, I used to go to the shrine where there was a fakir, a holy man who sang and played the one string iktara. And for the next seven years, I learned from him. And in his songs, he told me that if I couldn't sleep, I should follow my dream and obey the call of Allah. And so then, what did you do? I went in search of a shrine which would be my spiritual home. Then, after many weeks of searching, I came across a small shrine. I saw the same hand that I saw in my dreams, and I heard a voice calling me by my name. Come over here, Sai Zahu. The Baba is calling you. I looked around, and an old man said to me, "You have been called to be disciple of Sayyid Niyaz Hussain Shah." He was a descendant of the great poet Baba Bulle Shah, who was born there. So I presented myself there and went into discipleship. So, what do you actually feel when you are singing this this very devotional, very intensely devotional music? I am the Peer's Kalam. It doesn't matter where I am or who is there. When I sing, all I can see is my master. I sing only for him and to him. And he is Hazrat Baba Bulle Shah. Ye Hazrat Baba Bulle Shah. So, what is very special about the poetry of Baba Bulle Shah? Hazrat Baba Bulle Shah ke kalam. It is full of truth and nothing else. It is the truest truth you will ever hear. For example, he says, if you want to look at God, look at your master. It is the master who will lead you to oneness and not ask about your caste or creed. It is he who shows you God, who lives within you. Everything else is transient. This word, it is not yours or mine. So, Sayyid Zahoor, you say you're going to sing us something very beautiful by Hazrat Sultan Bahu, another famous poet of the Punjab. I guess can you tell us a bit more about what was special about Hazrat Sultan Bahu? देखो जो वली हैं, all the poets really have one message that we should become one with the divine. Sultan Bahu writes, the seed of love is planted by the master, and as the plant grows, it's showered with water by the master. No part is left unwatered, and then the bud flowers into love. And every line of his poems ends with "Who." This signifies the person's whole being. His soul breathed out of his body, so it can be united with God. And it is the "Who," the breath, that gives life to the flower of love. Long live my master, O Bahu, who planted this seed into my heart.
Sai, what what is this that you you play when you sing? Can you tell me about this? What is this called? Sindhi deji school. In the province of Sindh, it's called the Iktara, which means one string. Here in Punjab, it's called Tumba. It actually has three strings, but it sounds like one. The three strings with this oneness can produce infinite melody, and that's also how it is with God. Here is a little poem. Tan 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 plays the iktara. Within this one string, there are thousands of rags. This tumba is as deep as the ocean. Each note, a water drop adorned with the oneness of the ocean. Its mournful cry causes a pain that becomes its own cure, as it utters only the one truth. Tan tan tan, it plays. Tan tan tan, vajda iktara.
Faisalabad, the city which used to be known as Lyalpur, named after its British Lieutenant Governor Sir James Lyall. It's famed for its cotton industry and it's sometimes called the Manchester of Pakistan. But it has another, even bigger claim to fame. It's the birthplace of the great Qawwal, the late Ustad Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan, who died 10 years ago this month. His ancestral home still stands in this city. In fact, it's just across the road from here, the shrine of Sufi saint Hazrat Lasuri Baba, who died in 1932. Nusrat's ancestors had performed at this shrine during the lifetime of the saint, and Nusrat himself, no matter how busy he'd become internationally, spent many evenings singing here. The shrine is a small, unassuming kind of retreat, carpeted in rose petals, and the saint's tomb tucked away to one side. Nusrat believed that it was the blessings of this saint which were directly responsible for his own worldly success and for the way in which he took Kavali to almost every nook and cranny in the world. And the Kavali tradition continues here. With Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan's nephews, still in their early 20s, Rizwan Fateh Ali Khan and Muazzam Fateh Ali Khan, accompanied by brothers, brothers-in-law, cousins and pupils in this 13th century song, Man Kunto Mola.
manasto manam guna
Joined now by Rizwan and Muazzam Qawal, nephews of the late Ustad Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. Um, Rizwan uh, and Muazzam, can you tell us a bit more about this shrine? Is the shrine of Hazrat Baba Lahori Shah. He lived and died here in Faisalabad. We are continuing a family tradition. Over a hundred years ago, our grandfathers, Fateh Ali Khan and Mubarak Ali Khan, regularly used to give hazri, which means going in the presence of the saint. They used to sing for the saint during his lifetime. Now he is passed over to the other side. We continue the tradition and sing at his shrine. 
Yes, our uncle, the late Nusrat Fateli Khan, carried on the tradition. And after partition, half our family ended up on the Indian side of the border, in Jalandhar. So they had to come across to join us in Pakistan, in Faisalabad. So we are carrying on a long family tradition. Rizwan and uh, Muazzam, you were born after the partition. But what is your experience of what your elders, your ancestors told you about the country being divided and specifically Punjab being split into two? Our ancestors used to travel all over India, playing for royalty and nobility. And the elders in our family tell us that all communities of all religions used to live in peace together in those days. But after partition, they had no choice. The family in Jalandhar had to leave. We have been allowed to go to India to play in Delhi, and we find so much love there. But we haven't been allowed to visit the Punjab. Our old family mansion is still there in Jalandhar, and I would like to be allowed to visit it one day. I hope that day will come. It has been uh, uh, 10 years since Ustad Musrat Fateli Khan Saab left us. Did both of you actually uh, study with uh, Khan Saab? We first studied with our father and then in 1996, when our father died, we began to study with uh, Nusrat Fateli Khan Sahab. Sadly, a year later, he was also gone. But in that year, he did give us so much, not just improving what we do, but he gave us compositions that were unique to our family, that were associated with our family style of singing. So can you tell me a bit about the piece we're going to hear now? We will sing Ra Gawati. This has been in our family for generations. It was sung by my grandfather, our father, as well as our uncle, Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. It's a song where the devotee is appealing to the great Sufi master, Muinuddin Chishti of Ajmer. The devotee says, O oh master, turn your merciful glance towards me. This is my plea. You know what's in my heart. Overlook my faults and please allow me to be with you. Yeah. 
That was absolutely exquisite. Raghavati Rizwan and Muazzam Qawal, nephews of Ustad Musrat Fateh Ali Khan Sahib. Actually, it was not a plan for the people. Actually, we should tell you it was a bit of happy accident that we became Kawals at all. When I was nine and Muazzam was eleven, there was a singing contest at school, and our friends persuaded us to go for that, and we won first prize. So our father sat us down and told us that if we were serious about singing, he would teach us. And to show that we were serious, we started regularly attending the Shrine of Baba Lasuri. And people said, well, they won the competition, they should sing at the shrine. Father was horrified. He said, we weren't ready for this. We insisted we could do it. So eventually he said, okay, but if you mess it up, you are never going near the shrine again. And he sat among the audience to scrutinize our kawali. But in the end, the performance was a big success. Actually, we didn't sing that well, but because we were so young, people made huge allowances for us. So from then on, day and night, our father taught us all the traditions of the family, and it was after father died in 1996 that we moved to our uncle, Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan Sahab. And now, as brothers, we teach each other. We add to each other's knowledge. Obviously, Qawwali is a, is a great form of devotional music, but there seems to be a great deal of controversy among the fundamentalists and more traditional people who say that this is not really a correct form of Islamic worship and yet there are others who say this is all we do. So what, what is the situation with, with regard to Qawwali? Islam came from Central Asia, Balakh and Bukhara and it was the Sufis with their Qawwali who brought it here. It's thanks to Mohinuddin Chisti and the Qawals that Islam came to this part of the world. They converted so many people to Islam. They gave the people one message, the message of love, which is why it appealed to the people. And then, as now, it's the job of the Kawal to spread this message throughout the world. And Kawali has stayed the same. We mainly use the harmonium now, rather than the sarangi which they used to use. But the message is the same, love for God and all of his creation, love for the Prophet, love for the Sufi saints. And because it's a spiritual music, it's powerful music too, so it moves the people. So what would you say to those who say that music is not the right way to worship God? If you say music is haram, it's forbidden, well, you don't have to listen, you can stay away. But this isn't something we've invented, it's our family tradition, it's a thousand years old. There are many around the world who will still worship God through Kavali. let them do so. We come with a message, a message of love, and you can hear it if you want to, or you can ignore it, but it's a simple message. Once again, it's love for God, for the Prophet, and for the Sufi saints. <laughs>
Turiya Ja Farida. Keep on Farid. Keep on keeping on. Do not disrespect this earth. You trample over it when alive, but when dead, you lie pressed within its bosom. And no one holds your hand, your friends do not come with you. Words of the 11th century mystic Baba Farid of Pak Patan. They are sung here in Pakistan. And they also form part of the Sikh holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib, and are sung in Sikh temples in India and all over the world. The partition of India is, effectively, the partition of the Punjab, but its tradition of mystical music, celebrating God every which way and regardless of political boundaries, is thriving. We've seen a tremendous and genuine affection and mutual adoration and respect among Punjabis both sides of the border. They share the same musical tradition, saints, mystics and poets, and the realization that there is one God and He has many lovers, and that He and His music cannot be partitioned. Sama mama da, sama mama da, da da da. 
Yeah, 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 yeah